We have never booked a win at the Hustler Casino Live, and that changes all today. I just feel it. Let's go win some money, and let's run good, baby. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys like to see more action like this. It can only happen if we continue to grow the community. Let's get there. Hopefully we win. Let's do it. In seat number four, you see close to bro, Kieran, YouTube poker vlogger. Really amazing human being. I expect to see a lot of chip movement from that seat. I feel like maybe a few people take this for granted, but playing on the Hustler main stage under the lights is one of the most special things to do, at least in our little world. Every time I get to play on the stage, I'm excited to do so, I'm ready to do so, and I'm here to put on a show, or at least pretend like I can. In this very first hand of note, I sit here early on in the session with the old seven deuce. Action folds to me on the button, and I decide to raise it up to $200. Both Israeli Ron and Mike X, friends of the vlog, decide to make the call here from the blinds, and the flop comes out queen high. Not a whole lot to work with here, but when the action checks to me, I didn't raise seven deuce to not try to go for it, so I do just that. I bet 300, pretty small here, looking to get folds from hands that are like ace high or king highs, but unfortunately, both players make the call. Looks like we're going to have to do something on the turn, especially when it comes out the king of diamonds. Doesn't change anything to the board here at all. No flush draws. Nothing to really worry about. And when the action checks to me, I feel like there's a small chance one of these very capable opponents could have let out with the straight. So if they're not betting, I don't think they've got anything powerful. So I just go ahead and bet half pot here. $800. And luckily for us, a little reluctantly, but we end up getting two folds. We love to see it. Some deuce came on? That was a very erotic oh, no, sort of a look that. there. Let him get away with it. Let him no, get away with it. The real was the deuce. You were the one. That was the best hand. That's what I'm saying. You gotta be careful. More poker to be had in this following hand. I'm under the gun and I look down at pocket fives. I go and raise it to $150, just trying to get my race, my raises in order here. It folds all the way to the big blind, Mr. Johnny. He decides to make the call. Going off to a flop here that comes queen 4 3. Honestly, a pretty decent card, or boards, I should say, for my specific cards. And when he checks over to me, I throw a small equity denial bet and for partial value for 100 bucks, and Johnny makes a call. The turn card comes out the ace of clubs, and after a little bit of joking from Christian Soto in the booth, whether I'm betting for a bluff or equity denial or a bit of both, in real time, I really think that I can still get called by worse. If our opponent has a hand like a suited four, Probably not going to get away from it at this exact point. And again, I want to deny a little bit of equity from random king high floats. I bet 300 and he pretty quickly makes a call. River card comes in eight of diamonds. It's very unlikely that I'll be getting any value from that hand at this point. So when he checks over to me, I go ahead and make a simple check back. Luckily for us, we end up winning this hand against three deuce of diamonds. <laughs> The session continues to press along when Mike kicks is an early position and he decides to race to 300. There is an $80 straddle on, and after the button makes the call here, I'm in the third blind as they call it for 40 bucks. Easy call for us with the 8-9 of spades. The big blind calls as well, and we're going four ways off to a flop that I have middle parent. At this point, it checks to Mike, and he dies, decides to throw out a pretty sizable seabed here for 800 bucks. A little worrisome, but a little less when the button decides to fold and the action's now on me. With one person left behind, honestly, folding is probably fine too. But again, you don't call with this hand, make middle pair with some backdoor opportunities and just fold. So I make the call, I'm going to a turn card that comes the five of hearts. Okay, pairing the board, a little interesting, and even more so when I check it over to Mike, and he bets big again, $2,000. Once again, I'm still a little worried about the situation, but... I think my hand's still a little too good to fold. Considering very simply put by Christian himself, I have a hand that does not interact with any of the hands that I want my opponent to have, like Queen Jack, King Jack, or any diamonds. All that to be said, we've got a pair, and I'm not good enough to fold, so I make the call. The river card comes out the four of hearts, once again changing nothing. So if I'm being quite honest, I don't call down here to find the perfect runout possible with all the bricks and make a big hero fold. So when I check it over to Mike, I realize that I'm probably going to have to make a big call here. There's a very good chance that Mike is trying to get the best of me with the hand like aces or kings. But I'll worry about that when I cross that bridge. After checking back, though, we are very confident we have the best hand. And we show, and we are, in fact, good. 
Sorry, Mike. You just bluffed into the worst donkey in the game. Rocket man. In this following hand, I look down at the old Queen 10 offsuit from under the gun. Definitely a little bit on the curious side of things, but you don't come onto the show to start folding. I raise it up to 240 after there's an $80 straddle. It folds all the way to Johnny in the straddle, and he defends. We're going off to a flop here that comes out Jack Jack 3. When he checks it over to me, I throw out a really small C bet of 200. I don't think I need to go all that big here. Ace highs are probably going to float for most of my bets so getting king highs and hands that are slightly better than mine a fold is probably a good idea and we can definitely crank up the aggression on the turn if we need to if we pick up some equity looks like that's not the case when johnny throws out a quick little raise to 500 and considering johnny's been getting beat up so far if there's anyone to punt or blast my money off to seems like johnny's a perfect person so i make the call the turn card comes out to five of spades now giving me a fake backdoor flush draw he bets 500 once again, pretty small, and with how small and prodding this bet is, he deserves it. Let's give him the 500 bucks. Hopefully the river doesn't come out something to make me go crazy, and it doesn't. Seven of diamonds doesn't change much here. After a little bit of pause, Johnny ends up deciding to throw out a pretty sizable bet. There's just no way I can call with queen high. I joke a little bit here, but I realize that there's just not a chance that I'm going to be good here. Don't think of any bluffs that don't get there somehow, so... I end up making the fold after donating several hundreds of dollars to Johnny. And luckily for us, we end up seeing the good news from Johnny as he shows Queen Jack. So definitely a pretty fun session to this point. The $80 straddle is on and so is the stupid game. For anyone that's not cultured in the stupid game, it's pretty much just a stand-up game without the stand-up part. It's a $100 or $200 bounty per person, so it's kind of an important one to win. At this point, there's been three of these or two of these put out already. I'm under the gun to ace six of diamonds. We've got to go for it. I race a 240 after the $80 straddle. Ends up folding here to the button. He makes a call. The third blind makes a call, and so does the straddle. We're going four ways off to a flop. And if you guys are watching this, let's see something good here. On the count of three, I want you guys to click the like button. One, two, three. It looks like you guys came through more than I could have possibly hoped so. We flopped the absolute stone cold nuts. Uh, pretty hard to do, but we did it somehow. I'm going to go ahead and throw out a little bit of a prodding bet here. 400 buckaroonies. And luckily for us, we get one player to come along. Mr. Alex, the turn card comes the king of hearts. And when he checks it over to me, I realize that I'm probably not going to want to be blasting off here. At least not at the exact moment. I don't want to give my opponent the opportunity to get away from his jack at this point if he has one. So I check it back. We're going off to the river card that is a beautiful brick as it comes the deuce of hearts, not double pairing the board. He ends up betting $2,000 over the size of the pot. I have to think about this for a second. It's a pretty massive bet here. And then I land on the fact that I'm going to look really strong if I raise here. So I don't think I can go super -de duper -de big. I just make it 5000 And Alex snap calls. I can't even put the money out fast enough. And we are good. He ends up flashing us a king. And look at that. We end up getting max value from a king there. Probably, honestly, to be fair with ourselves, not max value. We got max value on the specific river, but it feels like we could have got some more money there on the turn. What do you do? Nice hand. Here. Here we are raising to 240 bucks. $80 straddle has been a staple so far. I'm on the button with Jack 10 offsuit. Sashimi from the big blind calls, and then Mike X from the third blind calls, and so does Nick Vertucci from the straddle. We're going off to a flop here that comes out queen seven deuce. Nothing to really talk about here. It just checks through. The turn card's a good one, though. It ends up bringing me second pair. With the action checked over to me, I think betting here makes sense. I decide to bet half pot, 500 bucks, and after a couple of folds, Nick lets me know that he thinks he has the best hand or whatnot, and he makes the call. I don't know what this speech play really means. I mean, I still think my hand's pretty good, but a little less so when the river comes out the king of hearts. Kind of a frustrating run out here as a lot of his hands like king jack or king nine now improve to the best hand and so do his flush draws. So when he decides to throw out a big bet here for $1,500, I think I've got nothing to really do here besides make the fold. Sure, we do block the nut straight, which we could sometimes raise with here as a little bluff but hey, you got to give him credit when credit's due. 
Nick said he thought he had the best hand of the turn, so I'm going to give him the best credit and just fold, I suppose. And then he just windmill 360 dunks on my forehead when he shows 7. A 7-4. Seven Getting embarrassed. It won't be the first time I do it today, but just got to tip your cap, I guess. After getting completely destroyed in the last hand, we're looking to rebound back here. Mike X is in the cutoff here, and he decides to raise it up to $320. The big blind decides to make the call, and I'm in the straddle, and I look down at Ace of Six of Hearts. To be quite honest, it probably would be a good idea to just do a little three better Rooney with this hand, but in real time, I'm playing a little passive. I'm feeling myself. I'm up a little bit here. So I throw in the old call. We're going off to a flop here that comes out 9-5-3 with two spades and a heart. I don't know how good of this of a play this is, but I just think, hey, why not throw out a little probe bet? This board looks really good for somebody from the blinds or the straddle. I'm going to have a bunch of this random junk here. A lot of the sets, a lot of the little two pair combos, like 3-5 suited, 9-5 suited, and all of the top pairs. I make it 300, and Mike X calls. We're going off to a turn here that comes probably the best card in the entire world. I could not have picked out a better card. If the poker gods asked me what I was looking for, the four of hearts is what it would have been. I bet out 1500 bucks going the size of the pot. Looking to put my opponent in a tough spot here, and obviously I can have a hand like 6-7, suited, but after a bit of thinking, Mike does something I was not expecting. He pretty much slaps me in the face with $5,500. Yeah, all the joking around, although Mike is a good friend of mine, at the poker table, obviously we're not soft playing one another. He is putting me in a tough spot here, He's feeling himself with his bottom pair in flush draw, but little do I know that I find myself here in a tough spot. To be quite fair, I feel like jamming has some merit, but just to be honest with you, I have all of myself, my own action here, so maybe jamming to me feels like a little bit of a punt. So I end up deciding to fall on the call option, and the river card is a six. Uh, That's interesting. It puts four to a straight. I now improved the second pair, and I don't have anything to do here besides check. I'm pretty disappointed. I feel like I'm going to lose his hand. And then after a little bit of pause after I check, I realize that Mike hasn't done anything yet. And a little bit of more time goes by, and then he asks me how much I'm playing, to which I respond, 13, 14,000. At this point, it hits me, and I told Mike this honestly after the fact. If he decides to bet, I saw it. I visualized it. I'm going to hero call. I don't see... Any hands for value that can possibly jam this river that doesn't contain a 7 or 7-8. Seven, and if that's the case, it's just really hard for him to raise with a hand like that on the turn because I have a 6. And then this, yeah, I'm, I'm almost just speaking in circles. My basic point is I have a read here. I don't think my opponent can have a 7. And if you don't have a 7, I don't know how the hell you can bet the river. And that's just as simple as that. So after quite a bit of tanking, Mike decides the better of it and says that he has to check it back and shows his three. I show my six and it is in fact good. A really crazy hand, over $12,000 in this pot. This could have been the biggest pot I've played in my life. Shout out to Mike for even mustering the courage to even consider going all in there. Huge shout out to him. Great job from Christian on the commentary. A whole lot of fun in that hand. And we're just getting started. There's more poker to go over. Once again, our passiveness is getting the best of us and our inability to keep track of the table action. Under the Gun raises to $140, Mr. Mike X, and I thought that that was a $160 straddle. At this point, a 3-better makes it $400 to go. The button calls, and I'm in the small blind, and I look down at Ace-10 of clubs. I feel like this should be a raise here if I understood the action, playing this a little more aggressive, but in real time, I just think that somebody raised, and I don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Anyways, the big blind calls as well, and so does the initial raiser. We're going too many ways to count to a flop that comes out king high, but giving me the nut flush draw. At this point, we start with the check, and so does everyone else in the hand. The turn card comes out a beautiful ace of hearts. I consider leading out here for many different reasons, but I decide to just go with a check, allowing somebody else to either bluff at this or bet whatever the heck they have. It eventually gets the initial three better, who decides to bet out 500, the action on me, check raising here is probably a reasonable idea, but I decide to save my trap for the river. 
I make the call here, and we're going heads up to a river card that comes at three of hearts. Changes nothing here at all. Actually, it does. Spoke out of my ass again. It brings a backdoor flush. And because this is the case, I don't think I can bet for value here on the river. I think we have a pretty clear bluff catcher. So when I check it over to Tall, he thinks about it for a quick second before deciding to check it back. We obviously miss out on some form of value, but hey, when you're taking in $2,000 in profit, it's hard to complain. And what it is before you leave. Yeah. Because I, I, I didn't retain it, and I will come. Yeah. I will come. Imagine I'm Italian. Bonjour. Is that what they say in Italy? No, that's French, dude. Oh, my Lord. Come on, Kieran. Bonjour. Bonjour is not Italian. Oh, God. We need some, we need some, we need some geography up in here. We need some class. Come on. What's happening? Here we are blasting off again with a hand that's not so great. 7-5 of diamonds. At least we're playing in position for this whole hand. When we raise from the cutoff, the button folds. Ends up getting over to the straddle. Miss Way, who's been wonderful to play with and been running pretty gosh darn hot. So when she decides to peel one off here, somehow having me dominated with 8-5 off, we're going off to the flop that comes 8-deuce-4. Pretty good flop for us to see, but it feels like, right? Aces is probably what I'm raising. I throw out the old continuation bet, to which Wei decides to not give it away and call here with her gutter ball. We're going off to a turn card that comes out the 10 of hearts. Once again, not changing too much the board. She decides to check it over to me, and at this point, I decide to put in the aggression. I throw out a meteor bet, two-thirds the size of the pot here for $700. Once again, looking to get those middling pairs to fold, like 5-4, 6-4... King do suited, all those kind of middling hands that are probably not going to be able to withstand multiple bets of value. And on top of that, I can probably get away with the big barrel on the river if our opponent just calls, as I understand that they're probably capped to just one pair. All that to be said, it means nothing. It absolutely means nothing when Wei sees right through my bullcrap and sticks it to my face and raises to 1600. Damn near clicking it back. Well, seems like at this point, I'm just saving face. I got absolutely dunked on here. Shout out to Wei for uh, giving it to me that way, I guess. We end up folding it, and I will not understand that I got bluff until after the fact. So again, shout out to her. Actually embarrassed me. And then she hits me with a sly smile at the end. Dang, this girl's a killer. Last time I was here, I brought like a good amount of watches. Just me and Johnny? No. I was telling Ryan, and I got... Uh, no, I have a good hand. Well, after getting dunked on in that last hand, we've got to do some dunking. So when Alex decides to raise it up here from early position to 200, and then Johnny, who is next to act, decides to 3-bet to 700. We look down at king-queen offsuit here, directly to the left. It hardly ever in poker goes raise, 3-bet, 4-bet in a row. But here we are doing just that with king-queen, baby. We make it $2,400 to go. It's a little worrisome for sure, but hey, we haven't thrown in too many 4-bets today. And it feels good when you do it. The blood is rushing. We're bluffing. And after quite a bit of pause, Johnny ends up deciding on a call. Here we are going off to a flop in position with an already $5,000 pot that's bloated way the hell out of proportion that comes out jack 7-6. Uh, not that great of a flop to be quite fair for my exact hand, but probably a flop that I got to be c-betting right. I don't know what I'm doing. He checks to me, and like the donkey that I am, I check it back and give up the aggression in the hand. It seems like the aggression is now in his court when Johnny decides to lead out for $1,500 on this turn card. That is a great one as it comes to 10 of hearts. One of the best cards in the deck for me, I now improve to an open and a straight draw. If an ace or a nine comes, it feels like I'm getting all the money. And if a king or a queen comes, there's a small chance that I can make the best hand as well. The river peels off a uh, three of clubs. Oh, man. At this point, our opponent checks it over to me. In real time, although he doesn't realize it, Johnny has played this hand at damn near perfection. He's bet when he knows he can get value, and on the river, when he can probably only be a bluff here, he allows me to go for the bluff when he checks it to me. There's a small chance I think I can get a hand like king-queen suited, ace-queen, or ace-king to fold, and there's really no purpose in betting really massive here. But after a little bit of a speech and a bit of tanking, Johnny ends up making the call. I... 
let him know that he made a great call. And Johnny is such a gentleman about it. Even though he was getting beat up for most of the session, he ends up booking a really sizable win and checks in to see if I'm doing okay after making the big bluff. Johnny, I'm happy to say, I'm really happy that I was able to punt it off to you. What is it? I'm going to straddle the 160 then. You liked India? Wait, love so. it. I'm Indian. I'm, I'm yeah. straddling 160. 160 straddle. You speak 40 languages? Pretty nice. Oh, it's just Re Spanish straddle and hand. And English. Hmm. English, I'm like kind of not good at that. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> six under. Six under. Wait, come on. Mike Just X. Like, Mike. Tries to ISO. Little does he know. Oh, no. This is going to be a sight for sore eyes, Mr. Close to Broke. Kieran. Ace King suited. Oh, hello. That's the face of Ace King suited. No, you're not. I swear to my Ace King, I almost stacked Mike. How was that bad luck? I was punting. Punting. Grab some green. Grab some white. Squeeze play. Three large. See, I didn't look. Smart man. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I'm not that good. I think I traveled to the monk. Yep, everybody goes down. What a flop. Well timed double straddle. It would have been my first royal ever. Did you miss the here? No. If you thought the big pots were over, well, I'm happy to say that you are sadly mistaken. Another big pot is a Bruin when early position raises to 250. Next to act tall makes a three bet to $1,000. I don't even think there's a straddle on in this hand, so these raises are kind of big. Looking to not really get in the crosshairs here, especially against these two aggressive players, until I look down at a good hand myself. Earlier we four bet with some junk. It seems like a good idea to do it when we have a decent hand, and pocket chickadees is definitely good enough. I decided to four bet this to $2,600. That's a that's a lot of money. It just is. It folds back to the three better who makes a call. We're going off to a flop here that comes king, eight, five, with two spades and a diamond. At this point, the action checks to me, and I throw out a small C bet for 1,800 into about 5,500. Once again, our goal here is to deny equity against a hand like ace, queen, queen, jack suited, some kind of random holdings like that, as well as get value from like tens and nines. Looks like none of that's going to really come to my best wishes here when Tall just sticks it in my face for $4,300 raise. Action's back over to me. This is kind of a tricky spot for sure. But to be quite fair, I don't feel like there's quite a bit of King X in my opponent's range here that's going to be check raising. I feel like Ace King is a pretty mandatory five bet as Tall is fairly aggressive and he's probably going to want to be doing this with some good hands as well. I can't completely discount it, especially because I don't have that much history with these players. I'm just playing with what I'm seeing in front of me today. So, outside of Ace-King, I feel like King-Queen just is probably not good to raise because I should have Ace-King, right? So, I decide to just peel one off here. Folding here seems kind of dumb. Although there is some space to worry about, my hand's kind of decent. We're going off to a turn card that comes the Deuce of Hearts. As you guys can see, I can't. Our opponent decides to check it over to me, and, and I think about it for a little while. I'm considering throwing out a bet once again, not to get a better hand to fold, which I think is highly unlikely, but to just get more value and deny more equity. I think if my hand or my opponent is doing this with something like ace-queen of diamonds or something like that, maybe it's a good check raise on the flop or whatever, feels like I can still get some value here, and there's also a small chance that my opponent has... A worse hand that will still continue on. All those flush draws we were talking about. To be quite honest, I just check it back. And we're going off to the river card that comes with deuce of spades. Ooh. Didn't want to see a spade here. Although there's not a whole lot of flushes in my opponent's range. As there's quite a few bets that have been put in preflop. I still got to be a little worried. But after our opponent decides to wave the white flag and check. I snap check it back. And he shows ace five of clubs. So shout out to him for even finding a bluff there. And luckily for us, we were able to hold on. We end up winning a near $15,000 pot. Definitely what we needed off the coattails of the disaster in the last hand. This is going to bring us to the end of our session today. The last hand to go over. Early position decides to limp it up here. And I'm next to act with ace nine suited. Let's go and make this a race to 400. 
Faisal, the gentleman to my left in the hijack, calls, and so does the initial limper. We're going off to a flop here that's not a whole lot of anything as it comes jack do seven. We check it through here. We don't have a spade in our hand. And the turn card is a really interesting one as it comes out the nine of spades. Sure, it brings in the front door flush, but now we improve to a better hand as we have second pair nut kicker. And when Johnny throws out a bet here for 600, I feel like we have an easy call. I wish I didn't call now because Faisal is putting a massive middle finger to my face and raising it to 200. With the action back over to Johnny, he goes deep into the tank and I start thinking myself. Ah, although I can't put my finger on it directly, it feels like Faisal's getting, getting stuck with his hand in the cookie jar. This is obviously a really easy spot to just go ahead and bluff raise if you had the naked ace of spades. And beyond that, there's a bunch of draws still to be had out there. Player, pair plus flush draws, pair plus straight draws, pair plus straight draws, and flush draws. I mean, there's just so much out there. So when Johnny inevitably throws in the fold, the action's over to me. And after a bit of thinking about it and looking at Faisal's stack, he doesn't have that much left to play. So I feel like it's going to have to be put in on the river. And the question now becomes, can I withstand a river bet? Uh, it's kind of tricky. It's kind of a spot where you have to go with a live read. And like I said, I just don't play enough with these players to have a live read. So I try to do my best with a little bit of table talk that I'm able to get through. But Faisal just gives me a little bit of a laugh here. And little do I know that is a laugh of a man that's bluffing me out of $5,000. I end up making the fold and Faisal has the naked ace of spades. Once again, getting embarrassed and slam dunked on. You could see it in my face. I look like an absolute buffoon. Look at my face. Just too good. Too good. Getting embarrassed. One, two, now three times in this session. All that to be said, I'm super thankful and grateful to have come into today's stream. Never take these things for granted. It's a blessing to be here, and I can only be here thanks to you lovely folks. So if you guys could do me a massive favor and click on the like button down below, subscribing if you're new or if you're not new and just haven't subscribed yet, and leaving a comment down below. It is such a pleasure having you guys here. We ended up giving away 5% of this action that you guys will now hear how much I won. So if you guys are interested in getting some more sweats like this and getting free money, I guess, all you have to do is be a channel member. And if you don't want to be a channel member, that's fine. I'm still giving them away on Twitter and random stuff like that. Either way, let's go to the outro and talk more about how we feel after that session. I can do this with my eyes closed. Unbelievably eventful day with really bad lighting comes to an end. Today was really crazy. The swings were kind of crazy, but let me let the emotions and everything settle in. It's always fun playing here, but we're gonna go to dinner right now. We're gonna catch up with some our boys. So let's go to dinner and we'll talk more about this. So I'm on the side of the road, not at the Hustler, not at dinner, but now we are in Barstow. Yeah, Barstow. I'm in Barstow now. We were into that session for 10,100 and the duck. The, uh, tips and whatever that I give to uh, the people I tip the dealers uh, like a hundred up front all the dealers that deal and then I give them a little bit extra and then for the, yeah. anyways we ended up winning about eleven thousand dollars I don't know if the stream said that correctly but I know how much I cashed out for so a pretty positive day a little bit upstuck ran a pretty big bluff like you guys saw there with King Queen but I won't take it back I actually don't mind it uh, for the most part, there was a lot of 3-betting and 4-betting going on randomly, but I wasn't really partaking in it, so happy that I got in the mix when I did. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out. If I played the hand a little differently, probably would have been able to get the fold. Outside of that, just uh, feels good to, uh, you know, run pretty good on the stream. I feel like you can't lose forever, right? And that's uh, obviously turned around to be the case. Anyways, massive shout out to Ryan Feldman, Nick Fertucci, and everyone at the High Stakes Production for having me. Uh, it's always a special time going there. The anxiety might even be too aggressive, but the butterflies that I get from you know going to the game and being involved with this whole thing is remarkable and uh, uh, something that I obviously never want to take for granted or anything. So again, the only reason I get to do any of this type of shit is because I am lucky enough to have the little bit of presence in the community that I do. Sorry about this, I gotta... So again, I couldn't do it without you guys. I'm forever grateful for y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed it. For all the people that commented on the last, or not the last video, but whenever it was that I posted that video, everyone has been given their lucky sweats. I ended up giving away nearly 5% of this for free. Quite a bit of money to just give away for free. But anyways, I'm thankful and grateful. Hope you guys have a lovely day. And Kevin, do you have- What's up everybody? 
Kevin is here under his own power. We're going to Vegas, that's why we're in Barstow. Let's go get over to the grinders in Europe, in little Europe here at Paris. Love you guys all dearly. Have a nice day, stay happy, totally. More importantly, look at the tingles your deuces. With my eyes closed, it's too easy. My eyes closed